Turn with me tonight to Luke, or this morning, I'm sorry. <laughs> Luke 17. We'll read together verses 11 through 19. Our subject this morning is simply true thanksgiving. True thanksgiving. Luke 17, 11 through 19. A very familiar portion of scripture. It came to pass as Jesus went to Jerusalem that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. And as he entered into a certain village, there met him ten men that were lepers, which stood afar off. And they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. And when Jesus saw them, he said unto them, Go show yourselves unto the priests. And it came to pass that as they went, they were cleansed. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back and with a loud voice glorified God. He fell down on his face at Jesus' feet, giving him thanks. And this man was a Samaritan. And Jesus said, were there not ten cleansed? But where are the nine? There are not found that return to give glory to God, save this stranger. And he said unto him, Jesus said to the leper that returned to him, Arise, go thy way, thy faith hath made thee whole. And when Jesus was demanded of the Pharisees when the kingdom of God should come, he answered them and said, The kingdom of God cometh not with observation, Neither shall they say, Lo here, or lo there, for behold, the kingdom of God is within you. Looking back to verses 15 and 16 in our scripture reading, if you will look back in chapter 17 again. One of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back and with a loud voice glorified God. And he fell down on his face at Jesus' feet, giving him thanks. And this man was a Samaritan. I apologize. When I read the last of that chapter, I turned two pages. So you forgive me. (laughs) But we're so glad that in this passage of Scripture, we find a formula for true thanksgiving. Let us look to God in prayer. Father, we're so thankful today. For this season, we're thankful, Father, for all the joy it brings to our hearts and lives individually and collectively as families. We're thankful, Father, for our church family and the joy that Thanksgiving brings to us. Lord, we're thankful for the opportunity to celebrate praise and thanksgiving, the expression of gratitude to a heavenly Father that's so worthy of our praise and thanksgiving. God, teach us today how to be truly grateful during this time of the year and throughout the year. We pray in Jesus' name, amen. After reading this passage of Scripture, the question came to to my mind, how many times have I forgotten to thank the Lord for the blessings He sent my way? How many times... Have I forgotten to thank the Lord? Have you ever had this question in your heart and mind? How many times did you neglect to thank God for a blessing that attended your life because of His goodness, His grace, and His mercy? My friends, I was called this morning by my mother in my office And she said, honey, have you got just a minute? I said, just a minute, Mom. (laughs) She said, Jerry has something to say to you. I said, all right. So Jerry took the phone. And he said, Wayne, did you know that God has given us 86,400 seconds today? I said, no, I hadn't thought about it, Jerry. He said, he has. God has given us 86,400 seconds today. He said, have you thanked God for just one of them? 
<laughs> I said, no, I, I haven't yet. <laughs> he said, do it, son, do it. Have you thanked God for just one of the 86,400 seconds that God has given you today? My friends, are we truly grateful for the gift of life? Are we truly grateful for the time that God has given us? Do we take for granted life and the air we breathe and the privilege of getting up and coming to the house of God this morning? I wondered how many times do we as Christians count our blessings? How many times do we fail to express our gratitude to the Lord? We have so many things to thank God for this morning. The new day that we have. The health and strength that allows us the privilege to sit here and to come to the house of God. Our families. When I went through the nursery this morning, what a blessing. Three little ones in our church family there in the nursery. And boy, as Stephen said, the women were doting on them. Weren't they, Stephen? <laughs> In fact, I heard Teresa tell Vera she could just go back home. She's going to watch these little ones today. <laughs> they were doting over the precious gift of children to our church family. I thought about the country in which we live. We have many problems, but I'm still thankful for America, aren't you? Thankful for the freedoms that we enjoy. Our church family. As Wayne said, he was gone for a couple of Sundays and he missed it. Well, I miss it too when I'm not here. And I know you do. What a blessing to come together here at the Rock Creek Church of God. Not to mention the salvation that God has given us through his son, Jesus Christ. In this passage, we find that only one leper out of the ten returned to express his gratitude can you imagine having such a dread disease as leprosy? An outcast to society? No family or friends to be around you? Being healed completely and not returning to thank the one who healed you? Only one out of the ten. Jesus was so pleased with this man as evidenced in verses 17 through 19, and Jesus answering said, Were there not ten cleansed? Where are the nine? There are not found that return to give glory to God, save this one man. And he said unto him, Arise, go thy way, thy faith hath made thee whole. In this one leper's expression of gratitude, we find the key ingredients of true thanksgiving. First of all, then, if we're to be truly grateful this Thanksgiving season, we must consider the position of true thanksgiving. Verse 16, the first portion of that verse says, The leper fell down on his face before him. The leper fell down on his face before him. Did you know that your very presence here in worship today assumes the proper position of true thanksgiving? There's so many people in our world today that are out doing their own thing. They're going to their own, their own places of enjoyment and recreation. They have no time for the house of God or the things of God. So may I commend you on the fact that you've begun the Thanksgiving season in a proper way by your very presence here in the house of God. You've assumed the proper position by coming and acknowledging God as your Savior, as your Lord, as your Heavenly Father. Yes, the beginning of true thanksgiving begins with the recognition of our own unworthiness of any blessing of God. You see, every one of us are unworthy of the good gifts that comes from God's hand. You say, why, Brother Abshur? Because we've all sinned. We've all come short of the glory of God. 
Our righteousness is as filthy rags in His sight. When we realize this, the least blessing from God will invoke praise from us. Amen? When we realize how unworthy we are for any of the blessings God sends, it should invoke praise and thanksgiving for what God has done for us. When we truly understand this truth, we give thanks to God in all things, regardless of our circumstance. And may I say this is more than verbalization. It's more than saying, thank you, God. My friends, it's surrendering in humble service to Him. It's seeking to live in obedience to His commands. It's seeking to be a help to our fellow man. It's seeking to reach others for the Lord Jesus Christ. It's seeking to be faithful to the house of God. Secondly, if we're to be truly grateful, we must consider the person of true thanksgiving. Verse 16 says that this leper fell at his feet. (laughs) The Lord Jesus Christ. The focal point of this thanksgiving season should be the triune God. The focal point of all of our praise and rejoicing should be found in Him because He's the reason for every good and perfect gift. How appropriate that this leper should come back to Jesus for it was Jesus who had healed him. And you know what amazes me about this? If you look at the last part of verse 16, it says this leper was a Samaritan. The Samaritans hated the Jews. They hated them. And this Samaritan, when healed by Jesus, who was a Jew, when he was healed and he recognized the wholeness that Christ, he came back and fell at the feet of this Jew and worshipped him and thanked him for that which he had done. My friends, may we realize that it's Jesus who heals us. It's Jesus who provides for our every need. It's Jesus that said if we seek first His kingdom, that all necessary things will be added unto us. Every need in life will be met in Jesus Christ. Yes, Jesus is the reason not only for the Christmas season, but for the thanksgiving season as well. True thanksgiving will always find us at Jesus' feet. You say, why, Brother Epture? Because Jesus is our creator. Everything had its beginning in Him. We didn't just evolve. No, it didn't happen that way. I know I was watching a program on television the other day and it was telling how many billions and billions and billions and billions of years before finally that which was in the sea crawled out on the ground. (laughs) Jesus spoke this world into existence. Ex nihilio, out of nothing, he made this world. And what amazes me, he created it aged. (laughs) That's what causes the scientists so much trouble. They try to date everything. Jesus created it aged. If you'd walked in the Garden of Eden when he made Adam and Eve, they weren't babies like little Riley. They were adults. They were made fully mature, full grown. Cut down the tree in the garden. Count the ring. It wasn't a hundred years old. It was just spoken into existence. He made the seas and the dry lands. He made them as old as he wanted them to be. I think God chuckles at us when we try to comprehend his wisdom and the depths of his understanding. I just know he is creator God and that he made all things. He not only made them, He sustains them. Colossians said that in Christ all things are held together. The moment God says it is enough and Jesus takes His hand off 
of holding things together, this old world is coming to an end. Time as we know it will be no more. Peter says the final day is the last day. And he said this earth will melt with the fervent heat. Are we ready for that time? Jesus is our sustainer. He's our savior. (laughs) He's our healer. He's our comforter. He's our advocate. He's our eternal ruler, praise God. No wonder the leper fell at his feet. He knew there was something different about this man, Jesus. A man who could say, go show yourself to the priest. And while they were going, wholeness came to their body. They were totally and completely healed. As the doxology says, praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above, ye heavenly hosts. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Then if we're to be truly grateful, we must consider the pledge of true thanksgiving. Please look again at verse 16. It says, giving Him thanks in this instance. Giving Jesus thanks. That's the pledge of thanksgiving. That should be the the main theme of our Thanksgiving celebration. Giving Jesus thanks. Praise God. And understand that this clause, giving him thanks, is in the present tense in the Greek New Testament. In other words, we just don't do it one day out of the year. (laughs) We do it every day. Our life is to be an anthem of praise and thanksgiving to the Lord. Praise Him. Praise Him. Let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. Amen. I want you to note the manner in which the leper continued to praise God. Verse 15 tells us it was with a loud voice. This man was unashamed of thanking Christ for what he'd done for him. With a loud voice, he could not keep silence. How many people have you vocally (laughs) praised the Lord before? How many people have you been vocal about your life in Christ? How many people Have you allowed that old psalm, let the redeemed of the Lord say so? Find that in your life and in your testimony. No one's going to know unless we tell them. This man said it with a loud voice. You know what that says to me? God doesn't care if we get a little loud every now and then. He doesn't care if there's some hallelujahs and praise the Lord and amens and thank the Lord. He doesn't care one bit. And I want you to know your pastor doesn't care either. As long as it's done in decency and order. (laughs) Praising the Lord. My friends, if we're to be truly grateful, our pledge of thanksgiving is to be continual. It's to be throughout the year. It's to be heard by the people about us. And the purpose of it is to glorify God. Not to bring attention to ourselves, but to glorify God. That's the motive of it, according to this verse. This man wasn't trying to draw attention to himself. He was trying to cast attention on Christ. He said, this man has done this to me. This man has brought wholeness to my life. And he had to glorify God. In closing this morning, I ask, are you and I grateful as we enter this Thanksgiving season? Remember, this Tuesday night, Rock Creek Church of God is going to assemble with other churches in our community at the North Highlands Baptist Church this coming Tuesday night, 630 I want this group of people that's here this morning to be there Tuesday night. 
When they say Rock Creek Church of God, stand. If they say that, I want to have a whole army of Church of God folks stand up. The new pastor there is going to be preaching the Thanksgiving sermon. There's going to be special singing. All kinds of good things. 6.30, Tuesday night, and then our services here on Wednesday night will be canceled for you to prepare for Thursday and all the activities of that day. Take advantage. Assume the proper position of thanksgiving. Oh, my friends, are you and I willing to get on our faces before God this season? Have we come to the only one who's the author and finisher of our faith, the Lord Jesus Christ? Have we offered the pledge of true thanksgiving, giving thanks continually, and even at times maybe shouting <laughs> what God means to us? You say, Brother Abcher, is it really that important? Well, look at verse 19 as we close. Jesus said unto this leper, Arise, go your way. Your faith hath made thee whole. Amen. Now Jesus said, my friend, because of your returning and because of your acknowledgement of me and what I've done for you, you've not only been healed physically, he said you're experiencing wholeness in your life. The key word is whole. It's true that God sends His reign on the just and the unjust. But wholeness of life, the spiritual blessings of God are reserved for those who are truly grateful and bow at the feet of Jesus and express gratitude for what he's done. Spiritual blessings as well as physical blessings are ours when we express true thanksgiving under our Lord. Shall we stand together as we look to him in prayer? Father, how we thank you today that you are the author, the finisher of our faith. Lord, we come not only to thank you for bread and meat on our table. We come, Lord, not only to thank you for health and strength. We come, Lord, not only to thank you for our children and our companions, our church family. But God, we come to thank you that you've given us spiritual life and life more abundant. We've come to thank you, God, because you've made us understand this world is not our final home. One day, Lord, because it's appointed unto everyone to die, and after that the judgment we're going to face you, Lord. One day, Lord, Jesus is going to break the eastern skies and come again, and time as we know it is going to end. But, oh, God, what hope wells up within us this Thanksgiving season because we can say to you, it is well with my soul because of you, Jesus. God, we love you today. And we thank you for every provision you've made for us to leave this place this morning whole and complete in Christ. We pray in his name. Amen.